Language influences how you think, you know, how you phrase things. Language influences your melody. Language influences your thought process, your choices, your rhythm, you know. Yiddish is an, in a way like restless language. You know, it has the melody of kind of like, I need to, I need to go somewhere. Like, I need to do something. It's a kind of, it's a restless language. But at the same time, it has a very relaxed melody. So the combination of that is what is very important in Yiddish music. When I hear a lot of musicians, I can go like, that person has no idea. Like, they don't, don't, and, and I don't think that you necessarily have to speak Yiddish in order to be a, a but it doesn't hurt, for sure. But, but what you do need is a relationship with it. You need to understand how it works. You need to hear how it works. You need to have a feeling for it. Maybe you're not a fluent Yiddish speaker, but you still need to have a, a relationship with it too. Because if you're in any, any, any folk music, you have to have the whole story of it, the whole big realm of it, the, not just the, the, the notes, because the notes on the paper mean nothing. They are, they don't represent what the music is. I mean, they, they are, they, they, they are just a symbol of it. It's like if you, there's a, there's this good saying that the map is not the territory. If you look at the map, you are aware of where what is, but it doesn't mean you know how the territory is, how the land is, how the air in feels, how the trees look, right? Like the map doesn't, if you look at the map of this place where we are right now, you won't see this. You have to like see this, to be here to see it. And the same with sheet music and, and the actual music. And for folk music, it's even more important because it's, comes from oral learning, from oral, oral uh, it goes from ear to ear, from generation to generation, and, and learning by ear and understanding that is incredibly important.